In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate volumes using the disk method. So I'll give the definition first, then we'll go over a nice conceptual example just to show what we mean when we say that this definition works. So let S be a solid that lies between X equals A and X equals B. If AX is the area of a cross section of S, then the volume is equal to a bunch of infinitely thin slices, which is just equal to the integral from a to b of the area of x dx. So what do I mean by this? Well, I have a picture of a cone being generated. So in other words, really, we just take a simple curve and then we rotate it around the x-axis. So all the points get mapped to some other point on the other side. And then we get a nice little cone shape here. And what we say is this area here, let's say this is some cross section. So this is the area of a cross section. In order to get the volume of the entire thing, we just take these infinitely small cross sections and take it across the entire interval. So we take the area of that cross section, we take the area of this cross section and every other cross section, and then we sum it up and we get our volume. So let's actually do this specific example with the cone. So find the volume of the cone generated by rotating y equals root x around the x-axis for y less than or equal to 2. So we can use some numbers if we want, but I do want to do root x. So at 0, at the square root of 1, and the square root of 2. So let's draw that cone. Then we rotate it around the x-axis. So it'll look just like we had before. So let's take a drawing here. Again, I'm, I'm very not good at drawing curves, so I will do the best I can to make sure that it looks somewhat nice. Uh, and then if I want to take another example cross-section, I usually draw another one just so I can pretty clearly see what I'm doing here. So we have to take the integral of the area. But the question is, what is the area? Well, if we rotate around an axis, we just get a bunch of circles, essentially. So if we take a look at this cross-section cross section more in depth, we can draw it a little bit like this. But what do we know? Well, the radius, we have a radius here. And we also know how to calculate the area of a circle. So the area of a circle, so we can say the area of x, is just equal to pi r squared. But what is the radius? Well, the radius is given to us by our function. So the radius in this case is the distance from the x-axis to the curve. So here, we have y equals the square root of x. So the square root of x is our radius. So the area of this cone is pi times the radius squared, which is the square root of x squared. So the area is just pi x. So in order to get the volume of the entire solid from 0 to 2, we take the integral from 0 to 2, because we want y less than or equal to 2, of ax dx, which is just equal to the integral from 0 to 2 of pi x dx. So if we take the antiderivative of pi x, it's just going to be pi x squared over 2 from 0 to 2. So we can plug in 2 for x, so we're going to get 4 pi over 2, so our area of our, sorry, the volume of our solid is going to be 2 pi. So again, just to recap what we did conceptually, we took the curve, y equals the square root of x, so let's erase all of this and just show this again conceptually. We took the curve, y equals the square root of x, we rotated it around the x-axis, which gave us a solid that looks like this. And of course we can draw more cross sections inside. So we have a cross section down here that will have an area. We have a cross section up here that will have an area. And these will all be different sizes based on, of course, the radius. I know it's not entirely symmetric here. 
then each of these cross-sectional circles will have a radius. And the radius is essentially the distance from the x-axis to the curve. And in this case, the function will, what is y? y is essentially our radius, and y is the square root of x. So we know the radius of this circle is the square root of x, and in order to get the area of that circle, it's just pi r squared, and the radius is root x. So then we have pi times the square root of x squared, which is just pi x. So that's one case. Let's do another example. So let's do y equals 1 minus x squared, y equals 0 around the x-axis. So in this case, I don't have too many limits here. I'm not telling you to do it between 0 and 2. So 1 minus x squared, we can graph this if we want. So if x is equal to 0, then y is equal to 1. If x is equal to 1 or negative 1, then y is equal to 0. Okay, so this is between the curve and the x-axis. So if we know anything about parabolas, it's going to continue down. But we don't care about anything after negative 1 or 1, because essentially we're just going to rotate this part of the parabola around the x-axis. So let's draw this. Let's rotate it. Well, if we rotate it, essentially we're going to get a nice cross-sectional area there, and it's going to be kind of football-shaped. Or I guess it could be eye of Sauron shaped. Okay, so in this case, we know the height of our radius at each point. So if we take a cross-sectional area, so we have some center point, we have, of course, the cross-sectional area here, and we ask, what's the radius of this cross-sectional area in that curve? Well, the distance from the x-axis is just equal to y. So here, our radius is y, and y happens to be equal to, to 1 minus x squared. So in order to get the area of the cross-section, which is a circle, we take the area of x is equal to pi r squared, and r is equal to 1 minus x squared. So, we can substitute 1 minus x squared in for r, and this will be pi 1 minus x squared, all squared. Okay, so now we have our function, and in fact it might be a little bit easier just to expand this now. So we would have 1 minus 2x squared plus x to the fourth if we multiply 1 minus x squared by 1 minus x squared. So now we can take the integral. Well, the integral is from negative 1 to 1, because that's our intersection points with the x-axis, of pi r squared. And r squared is just 1 minus 2x squared plus x to the fourth. Okay, so this is equal to, I'm going to pull the pi out. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to say that, well, these are symmetric, right? This area is symmetric. So I'm just going to take the integral from 0 to 1 and then multiply the entire thing by 2. Because then I'll have a 0 on the bottom and I'm less likely to make an arithmetic mistake. So because the areas are equal, I can just cut them in half and say, okay, the integral from 0 to 1 is just twice the integral from negative 1 to 1. And then I need to take the antiderivative of 1 minus 2x squared plus x4 dx. So let's do that. So this is equal to 2 pi times antiderivative of 1 is x. Antiderivative of 2x squared is 2x cubed over 3. Antiderivative of x to the 4 is x to the 5 over 5. And this is from 1 to 0. So we can plug in 1. This is 2 pi times 1 minus 2 thirds plus 1 fifth, which is then equal to well, 1 minus 2 thirds is 1 third, and 1 third plus 1 fifth, well, that would be 5 thirds plus, or sorry, 5 fifteenths plus 3 fifteenths. So this is 2 pi times 8 fifteenths, which is just equal to 16 pi over 15. So again, if you need to check the arithmetic, please do it slowly, but uh, this is the final result. So once again, just to recap, First, I drew the curve, so 
the initial curve. I just draw the axis here. In fact, let's really zoom in. So say parabola from negative one to one, it crosses here at y equals one. I then rotated it around the x-axis. So I got some cross-sectional areas that look like this. So now we have a solid, a 3D solid. Then I needed to find the radius of the solid. And the radius is just the distance from the x-axis to y. And of course, our function was given as y is equal to 1 minus x squared. So the radius was 1 minus x squared. So in order to find the area of the cross section, I just use the formula pi r squared for a circle, where r was, of course, the radius y minus 1x squared. And then I just took the integral of all the cross sections across the entire volume. So we have one more question, and I have x equals 2 root y, x equals 0, and y equals 9. And I'm rotating around the y-axis this time. So let's draw this one. Okay, so x is equal to 2 root y. So this might be a little bit more complicated to graph, but let's go ahead and try it anyway. So our top is going to be y equals 9. So we're going to stop at y equals 9. So let's see what happens when y equals 9. Well, when y equals 9, 2 root 9 is just equal to 2 times 3, which is 6. So it's about up here. And when y equals 0, it's 2 times root 0, which is 0. So our curve is going to look kind of like a cone, but instead of facing to the right, it opens upwards. So now let's rotate this around the y-axis, and it's really just the same method. So rotate around the y-axis, and we'll get a cone that faces upwards. So what does a cross-sectional area look like here? Well, we can draw one in down here. So we have this as our area. So the question is, what is the radius of this? Well, the radius of this would be the distance from the y-axis to the curve. And x is equal to 2 root y. So our radius here, as you can see, is not y this time but it is x, so it is the distance. It is the x distance, essentially. And x here is equal to two times root y. So the radius is equal to two root y. So if I want the area of this cross section, of course, it's gonna be pi r squared, but if we substitute in two root y for r, we now have two root y squared, and we can simplify this and say this is pi times four times y, which more simply is four pi y. So that's the area of a cross section. Now we have to take the entire integral from y equals zero to y equals nine in order to get the volume. So let's take the integral from zero to nine of the area of x dx, which is just equal to the integral from zero to nine of four pi y. We can take out the four pi, so this is four pi times the integral from 0 to 9 of y dy, just put in my dy's here. So this is just equal to 4 pi times, well the antiderivative of y is just y squared over 2. This is from 0 to 9. So if we plug in 9 into y squared, we're going to get 4 pi times 81 over 2. So this is just going to be 162 pi. So a pretty big volume. And the important part here, there's really two important parts. The first part is I graphed it. <laughs> that was the most important part, is graphing it. The second part was identifying what the radius was. And sometimes it can be challenging to figure out the radius, but we just draw from our axis of revolution to where the curve is, and we figure out that distance. So in this case, it was the distance x from the axis here. Now, it's not always going to be the y or x axis that we're revolving around, which I'll show in the next video, uh, but for these simple cases, we usually always have x as a function of y or y as a function of x, and we can determine the radius pretty simply. So if you have any questions about these exercises, please leave them in the comments below, and I will answer them the best that I can.